All right, hope you guys who are participating in the hackathon are having a fun time. And for those of you who do not know, we do have a hackathon going on. It's hackathon.webdevcody.com. There's 12 days left in 18 hours. So we just kicked it off recently, just yesterday. So there's still a lot of time for you all to join in and contribute. If you do want to, be sure to log in here with GitHub. Click on this register link, read through the rules, and then register at the bottom if you want a chance to win some prize money. Right down here, we have the breakdowns of the different categories. Um, so this project, although I can't compete in my own hackathon, I thought it'd be cool to at least try to build something and pretend like I'm competing. So for this particular project, this is like me competing in the collaborative category where I want to build a paint by numbers application. So the first step of doing a paint by numbers application is I need images. Okay. So I started working on a remix application over here and how this remix application works is we have a page which allows a user to type in a prompt here. So I can go ahead and say like the sun in space, go ahead and submit that. And behind the scenes, this kicks off a convex action, which is communicating with open AI, taking my prompt, basically attaching some suffix things to the prompt to make it be an eight bit type of image. And then I basically take the image that comes back from open AI. I do some computation over it to basically create a bunch of bins. Now, when I say bins, let's just go ahead and click on one of these. It's basically a 2D array of all of the colors that are in the image. Okay, so I try to find the most used color within a certain window, a 2D window in the image, and then that is the color. So if I do plan to do a paint by numbers game, I need to know what is the most used color from the AI generated image. And the idea is that after this is done generating, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and you can actually create a room and send that invite to other people so that you can have multiple people try to color in the same image as you are doing. And when it's finished, it'll go ahead and you know complete it. And maybe you can have like a collection of things that you've already finished. So as far as how the code works, we have a form here. When you submit it, we call a action called create image. And that is going to invoke a convex action. Now what this does is basically it takes your prompt and it creates a placeholder image using a mutation. So that's why you saw like a, a blank loader kind of show up. We create a mutation and we invoke it here to create that data structure and our UI just reacts to that and shows that, um, that loader. And then we use Dolly. So that's an open AI service. We send it the prompt over here. We basically append some eight bit game art stuff to it. Um, we tell it the resolution. And then after about 10 seconds, we get that response back. So after we get the image, I basically divide the resolution by a number. I don't know why I picked 42. I should probably change that to something else. But then I loop over the image and I kind of get the most common color that's used in that 2D space of the image. And then we basically create that bin. And then I also, using the bin, I kind of upscale that to a output image. Because the images that you're seeing here, these aren't the images that come back from Dolly. The images that come back from Dolly are actually like, have a lot more colors in them. They're not as like 8-bitty as you'd see here. And they're also kind of like not pixel art. So all this image processing is done using GIMP. Um, one thing that you might not know when using Convex, if, if you need a third party library that depends on Node, you just put a use Node string at the very top of your file. And any of the functions inside of this file will basically have access to the Node runtime because all the other things like mutations and queries, those aren't using Node. They're using like a, a faster type of execution um, context. Go read the docs. I'll explain it better than I can. But, but after we get the image, we basically store it. Inside of context storage here, you just do context storage dot store and you just pass in the blob. And then later you can get the URL for that blob, which we get. And then we finally update the database to have the latest image ID, the image URL, and then the bins here. And then also we have a bunch of placeholder uh, data here. So if I look at board, this is what I plan to use so that when you have multiple people trying to update the board, they can go here and update a value. And that'll update for everyone who's currently painting on the canvas. Um, if you like share like a room ID or something like that. So one thing I do want to quickly demo about Convex, which I, I personally really like. I like how this UI is super reactive. If I were to do multiple prompts at the same time, so like a moon in space and go ahead and do another one like Pluto planet. And then go ahead and say the sun. Notice how these images are stored to the database and the UI reflects automatically. I don't have any code that goes back and tries to fetch data from the database. The React hooks that they give you in Convex will automatically listen to WebSocket events and pull in that data as it gets updated. Again, you look at the code, this is all I'm doing. I just submit, I call an action, 
And because I'm using a use query hook here, all my images basically update when the filter of the query were to update. So behind the scenes, Convex is doing some smart stuff that basically keep track of what queries you're trying to do. And then as your database changes, it's going to run through your queries and mark a lot of them as dirty if users need to get updated. And it'll send off that WebSocket event back to I personally like that because now you can actually write less code and still have your UIs update when your data changes. All right, so that is all I want to share with you all for this little project I'm working on. I'm gonna keep on making videos during this hackathon and see if I can maybe finish this before the end of the hackathon. Just to kind of inspire everyone else who's like working on the hackathon, if something I do and teach in this video, feel free to take from it um, and do what you want with it. Again, my submission would be kind of categorized as the the collaborative part, but I guess technically this could also be um, AI related if you wanted it to be.